Welcome to the Zen of Refing Roller Derby, Lesson 3A, Verbal Cues. This is going to be the first of two lessons based on the printed Lesson 3 in my printed training manual. Hand signals will be covered in Lesson 3B. I'm Axis of Stevel, the author of the training manual. I'm filming this on May 14th, 2018. The contents of this presentation are up to date as of that recording. Should this video become obsolete or replaced with a newer version, I'll place a, disc, uh, place a link on the screen to the latest version. As always, you can find the latest version of the full training manual at www.tinyearl.com slash zendraffing. The link should be on the screen now. Quick disclaimer. The WFTDA, the MRDA, and the JRDA are not responsible for the content in, this training, in my training manual or this presentation, nor do they make any claims as to the accuracy of this content. For more information on everything I say in this lesson, read the WFTDA Officiating Cues, Codes, and Signals document. You can find the URL in the notes on this video's page on YouTube. I'm covering mo most of the important stuff, but there is more in the document that I can present in this lesson, and there's some, actually some good stuff there to go read. Now let's talk a little bit about communication. Referees talk using a form of communication which I like to call ref speak. It's clear it's a style of communication that leaves no doubt as to what you mean when you talk. It does this, for example, by minimizing pronouns, as any discussion with several people that use the same pronoun can quickly become confusing which of the people any given pronoun is referring to. It also avoids the use of nicknames, as, for example, not everybody in the group may know who the person is by their nickname. Ref speak also tends to be concise. It communicates large volumes of information in relatively few words. It does this by using specific verbal cues, which is going to be the highlight of today's discussion. So an example of good versus bad communication. Um, bad would be, oh, I saw the hit. Malice went in and she hit the jammer with her arm, causing her to go flying. And then she came back in and the blocker went in for a hit and bam, it knocked her right on the floor. If you said that in a group of referees, it would cause a lot of follow-up questions to ascertain really actually what you saw and were talking about. A ref speak version of that would be, I had a clear view of the entire action. White 1-8 initiated a block with her forearm to Black Jammer, forcing Black Jammer out of bounds. Black Jammer re-entered the track. White Blocker then initiated a legal hit, forcing Black Jammer down. You'll learn ref speak in time and with practice, and we'll be talking about it again in future lessons. Now, one way that ref speak word works, as I said, is by using a lot of the standardized verbal cues, which brings us on to what we're going to talk about today. When you say a, ver a verbal cue in a game, you want to say it loud and clear, especially when you're working on outside of the track. And you want to repeat these as necessary. Your target audience is not just the individual skater or skaters you're talking to. Your target audience is going to be basically all the skaters on the track. It's going to be referees. You want other referees to hear around you what's going on. You're going to want non-skating officials to have the opportunity to be aware, because sometimes, especially like when you're issuing a penalty, they're going to be NSOs whose job is to keep track of those penalties, and if they can't hear you, it's going to be difficult for them to understand what's going on. Coaches, skaters on the bench, you know, we want to keep them aware of what's going on. We want the announcers. I mean, it's difficult for them to hear you, and they often rely more on hand signals. But if they can tell, you know, uh, what you're saying, great, so much the better. And finally, fans want to hear what you have to say. So you're really talking to essentially everyone in the venue. And no, not everyone is going to be able to hear you. Your voice only travels so far. <coughs> Excuse me. But by being loud and clear, you will maximize the number of people which can hear you. Now, when you're referring to skaters with any sort of formal verbal cue, or even really in ref speak, you identify a skater oftentimes, not in the example I use, but oftentimes, and, and always when issuing a penalty or warning, by uh, giving the team color and then the number spelled out. So, for example, instead of saying uh, blue 10, you will say blue 10, because that's spelled out, or blue 4937, like that. To give a penalty, you will say the team color, number spelled out, then the verbal cue for what the penalty is. Or we abbreviate that all by just saying color, number, penalty. Sometimes you're not actually giving a penalty, but you do need to give an instruction to a specific skater, in which case you would say like color, number, instruction, or color, number, warning. Wiftus Cues likes to place, uh, well, Wiftus Cues document likes to place cues into three tiers, which they call stars. 
I just like calling them stu stars because I don't find it particularly intuitive. Instead, uh, I like to think of them as basic, intermediate, and advanced cues. So let's start by talking about the basic cues, or the one-star cues. These are formalized cues that sometimes lack specificity. For example, illegal procedure. This could really be a wide variety of any number of technical infractions in the game, and it is not incorrect to say, blue one zero, illegal procedure. But they may have no idea what they did. Later, the two and three star cues will provide additional information, and we'll come back to those in a minute. You have no need to memorize these from now. You'll be learning these in Lesson 3B when we practice hand signals. That's when you'll memorize them. These, these basic cues are back block, High block, low block, head block, leg block, forearm, illegal contact, direction, multiplayer, illegal position, cut, interference, illegal position, I'm sorry, illegal procedure, and misconduct. Now the intermediate cues are designed for referees that, you know, you've got some experience working games, or maybe you're new but you really want a good training, you just want to get it right from the start over there, so you kind of want to be looking ahead a little bit and make some good habits right off the bat. That's great, like that. But you don't have to learn these right away. If you're new, it is fine if you rely on just the basic cues. You're not wrong to use them. It's not advanced, and it shows you're a little bit of a rookie, but if you are a rookie, there's no real harm in that. The intermediate cues are basically replacement cues. We toss out the basic cue, and we give one of what would be multiple options of, you know, uh, basically the multiple intermediate cues, basically, like cues that just provide additional information on what the nature of an infraction or, infraction or situation is. So, for example, instead of saying blue one zero, illegal procedure, you might say blue one zero, star pass violation. And they go, aha, I know what a star pass violation is. I may not be sure what exactly the violation was, but they've got a lot more information on figuring, you know, they can now start taking some educated guesses as to what they did. Now, not all basic cues have related intermediate cues. So, for example, back block. That was a basic cue. There is no intermediate cue. There's no upper back block or left back block or lower back block. There's nothing like that. It's just back block. And using the basic cue in that, perfectly acceptable, because again, you can't get more specific. That's as specific as we ever need to go. Some basic cues have intermediate cues, but the intermediate cues do not cover all the possible illegal actions of that penalty type. In that case, we just go right back to the basic cue. For example, a skater that is on their way to the penalty box when they remove their mouth guard. There is no intermediate level cue for this action, so you just simply say, illegal procedure. Go right back to the basic cue. That's totally fine. The intermediate cues are, instead of illegal contact, you can say, illegal assist, early hit, late hit, out of play block. Instead of direction, you can say, stop block. Instead of illegal position, failure to reform, destruction, failure to return, failure to yield, or skating out of bounds. Instead of cut, illegal re-entry. Instead of interference, delay of game. Instead of illegal procedure, star pass violation, or pass interference. And finally, instead of misconduct, insubordination. Now for the advanced cues, or what WIFTA likes to call three-star cues. These are designed for referees with at least an intermediate mastery of the game. If you're just starting out now and are just starting to get the hang of the cues and the hand signals, you really don't want to ha you don't need to learn these right now. It's fine if you listen to this just to get an idea of what I'm talking about, but you don't need to learn this stuff. And the reason for this is because there is no list of advanced cues. It's basically fluid. It's not specific cues. It's whatever you need to communicate an important piece of information. So for example, Star pass violation, report as the jammer. You've just told the person that the position they will serve as when they go to the penalty box is they will serve as the jammer. That's important because during a star pass violation, I'm sorry, during a star pass, 
the, the, the players actually change positions. The jammer becomes a blocker, the pivot becomes a jammer. So you're basically telling the person, like, you might be confused as to when you got the penalty and what's going on here. I'm telling you, go serve as the jammer. Another example. Remember that skater going to the penalty box that took out their mouth guard? You might say, illegal position, I'm sorry, illegal procedure, mouth guard. And they go, aha, that's what it is. You've given them an additional piece of information identifying what the specific illegal procedure was. Another example. Cut, is, is cut uh, the verbal cue, refers to basically, uh, short version, going out of bounds, coming back in bounds ahead of either one opponent or two or more teammates. Basically, you're gaining position by going out of bounds, passing people and coming back in. So you might say, cut, two teammates. That helps them understand, oh, so it wasn't the opponent over there who also went out, you know, they're not the one I cut, it's the two teammates. Oh, okay. It helps them understand what the nature of the infraction was. Advanced cues can be very tricky and very difficult to do, both because when you ref roller derby, your mind is whirling at 900 miles an hour, so it can be very difficult to take a moment to basically think, what is the information I want to communicate, and then specifically communicate it over there. It's it's tougher to do that than you realize, even with multiple years of experience doing this. But it is the mark of a very skilled referee if they can do this. Now I want to take a moment and talk about obsolete cues. Verbal cues, uh, you know, like what are in the current version of this document, they've changed over the years. You can go find older versions of this document and there's cues that don't exist anymore over there. Old habits die hard as well. Many experienced referees uh, they default to using obsolete cues. It's just That's just what they learned back in the day, and when the game gets going and their mind is whirling, they just start throwing out obsolete cues. I mean, the, the penalty, like what the, the illegal action hasn't changed, but what we call it has, and they just start using obsolete cues. Matter of fact, some referees have kept up the habit of using obsolete cues so long that the cue was good and then became obsolete, and now is good again. It's back in style. So it's it's actually kind of funny like that. Because of many of these cues were, at least at some point in the history of roller derby, were useful, and because many of them are actually very self-explanatory, if you know how the game works, or at least still widely understood by the player base, many of these actually make excellent three-star cues. So you may hear some of these in a game, and just because somebody says them doesn't mean they're wrong. Just because a cue is obsolete and no longer standardized does not mean it is not useful in certain uh, certain contexts, in certain uh, situations. Now, I'm not going to explain what all of these mean. If you want to know, ask a more experienced referee. These obsolete cues are out-of-bounds block, out-of-bounds assist, destroying the pack, clockwise block, clockwise assist, stopped assist, elbows, illegal return, too many skaters, blocking with the head, penalty box violation, uniform violation, illegal call-off, bench staff violation, stalling, leaping contact, charging, unsporting conduct, reckless entry, embellishment, and blocking will down. And finally, some additional communications. These aren't penalties, so with one exception, they don't have levels. They're not basic, medium, or advanced, they just are. They're Essentially, you could call them all basic because they're all commonly used cues. You don't need to memorize them now. You'll be learning most of these in the next lesson on hand signals, and in a couple of these cases, they don't have associated hand signals, and you'll just sort of pick them up over time, or you'll learn them, you know, we'll basically talk about them more in other lesson's. These cues are and these, the, I'm sorry, the first six require skate, skater identification. So you'd have to say, blue one zero, or whatever the skater is, show the star, fault start, report to the box, stay on the track, return to the track, or go to your bench. There are some of these cues that do not require skater identification. So you would just simply say, star pass complete, team timeout, official timeout, Official review, two penalties, or three, or four, etc. No pack. There is, that is the one that has an intermediate cue, which is no pack split. We'll talk about the difference of what that means later on when we talk about pack formation in a whole nother lesson. Pack is here, which is also sometimes pack is front, pack is back, pack is all, pack is middle, etc. 
out of play, which is sometimes out of play in the front or out of play in the back. And finally, a cue which is not official, but I believe it should be because it is very useful in the game, which is jam is on. That one tends to get used because I'm not going to cover that in the other lessons. As, as the jam starts, if skaters are a little bit, you know, confused, did I hear the whistle? Did I not hear the whistle? Is the game going on? The nearby referees will just announce, jam is on. Basically, play ball. And skaters know they can immediately, immediately begin blocking and go to work. So, a little homework for you. I want you to go read the first two pages of the WIFTA officiating cues, cues, codes, and signals document. There's a lot of excellent information there on communication and uh, a lot of stuff in there I didn't go into today. Like that. If you're a new referee and you've got, like, say, a three ring binder that you've got the printed rules in it, I also want you to print out that entire document and put it in there because you're going to be referring to it and you're going to go reference it and look back at it at different times and it'll be very useful to have in your little reference manual. I will put the link to this document in the show notes next to this video on YouTube. If you've appreciated this video, please subscribe to my videos on YouTube. They're mostly derby oriented, uh, with the occasional video my son sneaks in of him playing with his toys. And you can feel free to give this video a thumbs up so it'll do better in YouTube search listings so more people can benefit from my great wisdom, or lack thereof. Otherwise, that ends the lesson. I will be back in Lesson 3B to discuss and teach hand signals. Thank you.